Hello, today I'm going to be showing you how to do these great scrappy rabbits. You're going to just use your scrap yarn, the scrappy rabbit, your bulky yarn, your fives and your sixes and your sevens, you know, the really chunky velvety ones or the furry ones, the ones that are more novelty like, or even the plushy ones. That's what's going to do the best job. This is super simple, easy enough for a beginner to experience great success with making their own rabbit and perfect for the advanced crocheter who needs a quick but personalized gift that they can that they can knock out in just a couple of hours and then send on its way to a very happy recipient. Welcome to Weaving Weird Studio and my creative weird life. My name is Sig and what a pleasure it is to have you at this time with me today. It's your interest and support that allows me to contribute new content and weekly videos. Help us all grow together by tapping the subscribe bar, notification bell, and like buttons. I look forward to your comments and always value your feedback. Now, also just a quick note before we get started with the tutorial is I'm really trying to get to a thousand subscribers. And so in order to try to sweeten the pot or encourage you all who watch my channel but haven't subscribed yet to subscribe, I am making a pledge that once I've reached a thousand subscribers, I am going to start randomly giving away the various projects I make on my channel. So if you're interested in becoming a recipient of that, the first step to being that person is just to go ahead and subscribe. And then once I've met that criteria, then I will set out the next easy to follow steps that will help me determine, or actually I should say rather help me randomly choose a recipient for that week's project. All right, let's get started. For today's tutorial, I'm using a very minimal amount of supplies. So for my first one is going to be a bulky size five crushed velvet yarn. And then the next one is a bulky size six. Now this is kind of an unusual yarn. I normally wouldn't buy something like this. However, it was on sale for like $3. So I couldn't pass it up. And it's this strange kind of novelty yarn that has the fur yarn and the crinkly yarn and the velvet yarn and then this more plushy yarn all kind of variegated together into one skein. So while I didn't have any idea what I was really going to use it for, and I sometimes find it difficult to pass up a deal, particularly on yarn, even if I'm not entirely thrilled with the yarn itself, I did find that these scrappy rabbits were perfect use of it. And then, of course, I've got two different size hooks. I got the G hook for my bulky five, and then I've got my K hook for my bulky six. A yarn needle. And then this is completely optional. So for this project, I chose to use a safety nose and these eyes. They're kind of a flat back eye. I believe I got them off of Amazon a couple of years ago. At any rate, you can actually use buttons, like a large button, or you can embroider your own eyes or nose on. Um, you can use safety eyes if that works out better for you, whatever you happen to have laying around the house, because, well, this is a scrappy rabbit after all. It just uses what you have available. And then, of course, I'm going to use a good glue, like a good fabric glue or all-purpose glue in order to glue my eyes on. So that's what I need. If you're going to embroider, obviously you're not going to need the glue. So with all that said, we will get started. So with my size five crushed velvet yarn, I am going to begin by making the cheeks. Now you're going to need two of those and I will show you how to make them. And keep this in mind because this is such an easy project and mostly the way we start is going to be really pretty much the same throughout the entire piece. So there's only a few things you're going to need to be able to do. For example, single crochet, right? You're going to need to do decreases and increases and making circles. And really, 
a lot of that is what it really just comes down to. So we're going to begin by doing our magic circle. And then I'm going to single crochet eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that's the completion of round one. Now you may want to use a stitch marker. The cheek, I don't think it's necessary. However, you may find it necessary. So you do you, whatever works best. Okay, so I've completed my first round of eight. My second round, and we're working in a spiral. My second round, I want a total count of 16. So that tells me I need to do two single crochets in each stitch. So one, two. three, four, five, six, and so on. Okay, so now we've completed our second round and with a total of 16 stitches. Now the next round, round three, which is also going to be our last round for the cheek, we want to end up with 24 stitches. So in order to achieve that, we're going to begin by doing a single crochet and then two single crochets in the next stitch. And then the next stitch, a single crochet and then two single crochets in the next stitch. Next stitch, a single crochet and then two single crochets in the next stitch. Now, when you put two single crochets in the next stitch, you can also call that an increase. And that goes without saying that that will be two single crochets in the next stitch. And you're going to do that all the way around and you're going to finish with a count of 24. And you're going to finish off. And when you finish these off, you want to leave yourself a pretty good length of tail because this tail is what you're going to use in order to sew your pieces together. So you'll want to have two of these to make your cheeks with. So now the next thing we're going to make is the tail. And the tail is very similar to the cheek. And that, that's exactly how we're going to start it off. We're going to start it off with a magic ring or adjustable circle, whichever you prefer to call it. And we're gonna single crochet eight in the ring. And that'll complete our round one. And then our round two, we want a total of 16 stitches. So we're going to increase, or in other words, do two single crochets in each of the eight stitches for round two. Now for round three, I want to end up with 24 stitches. So as before, like with the cheek, I'm going to do a single crochet in the next stitch and then increase two single crochets in the next stitch and then a single crochet in the next stitch and then an increase in the next stitch and then so on and so forth, a single crochet and then an increase. And then a single crochet and then an increase. I'm going to do that all the way around ending with a total of 24 stitches. Okay, so now that I've got 24 stitches on my third round, I want to do this 20 the next 3 rounds. I'm going to do 24 stitches. So for each round, I'm going to do a single crochet for each stitch, ending with 24 stitches. Three. So you should have a total of six rounds, and your tail should look something like this. Again, we're going to cut off a nice long tail for sewing. And we'll set it aside. 
So now the next thing I'm going to show you how to do is the arms. And again, we're going to want two of those. And just like the tail and the cheeks, I'm going to begin with an adjustable ring. And I'm going to get it started. And then I'm going to single crochet eight single crochets in that ring. And then again, I'm going to increase the second round to show 16 stitches. So that'll be two single crochets in each of the eight single crochet stitches previously put on the ring. So now that I've completed my second round, ending at a total count of 16, I want to continue for eight more rounds. And in each one of those rounds, I also want a count of 16. So that'll just be a single crochet in each of the stitches around. So now that we have a total of 10 rows of this crushed velvet or whatever bulky size five yarn you're using, we're going to go ahead because now it's time to change so now that I've got my new yarn ready to go, I'm going I'm to take this time to switch out hooks. So I'm going to use switch to my larger K size hook to accommodate my larger yarn. And then I'm going to start my decrease. So in order to do a decrease, or just a standard decrease, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to insert my hook into that next stitch. And then I'm going to pull up a loop of yarn. And then I'm going to take my hook and insert it into the next stitch and pull up another loop of yarn. Then I'm going to yarn over and pull that through all three loops. And that gives me my one decrease. So now I'm going to just do a single crochet in the next stitch. And then I'm going to do a decrease. And then a single crochet in the next stitch. And then a decrease. And then again, single crochet in the next stitch, and then a decrease. And then a single crochet in the next stitch, and then a decrease. And then a single crochet in that next stitch. That should give you a total of 12 stitches all the way around for your round 11. And then I'm going to do a single crochet in each stitch for round 12, leaving me with a count of 12 stitches. And now I want three more rounds, just like round 12. So basically that's going to be a count of 12 single crochets at the end of each round three more times. So now your piece should look something like this. Got a total of 10 rounds for your size 5 bulky yarn, part of your arm, and then you're going to have 5 rows, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, of your contrasting bulky size 6 yarn. So at this point, I'm going to just 
I'm not going to do anything just yet except to stuff my arm. And I'm going to light. Okay. So you kind of see we don't stuff it all the way to the top. And we just kind of leave it, you know, firm but manageable, soft. Now the next thing that I'm going to do, that I want you to do, is we're going to close this top opening off with six single crochets. So this one counts as one, the one that we've already got started. And then I'm going to insert my hook into the next two single crochets that sit right across from each other when I close the, when I close the opening. And I'm going to single crochet that shut. And I'm going to continue to do that for each set of stitches all the way down. Three. Four. So it gives me one, two, three, four, five stitches so far. And six. I'm going to chain one. I'm going to turn my work and this chain one acts as your first single crochet and then I'm going to do it one more time. So two, three, four, and five. And that gives me the finishing part of my next arm. So again I'm going to cut off a nice tail because I'm going to use this tail to sew the arm onto the body with. And that gives me my second arm. I've already made the first arm before starting the tutorial. So next thing I'm going to do is show you how to make the leg. Right? Again, we're going to start just like before adjustable ring, switch back over to your size G hook and to your size 5 bulky yarn. And then I'm going to go ahead and single crochet 8 in that ring. And again, we're going to increase round 2 to 16 stitches. So we're going to do two single crochets in each of the next eight stitches that we previously put on our ring. Now in round three, we want to end with 24 stitches. So that means I'm going to do my combination of single crochets and increases. So we'll begin by doing our first single crochet and then an increase in that next stitch. Next stitch is a single crochet and then after that an increase. And we're going to do that all the way around ending with 24 total stitches. Okay, so now that your third row should have a count of 24 stitches. Now for rounds four through nine, so your next five rounds should also have 24 stitches. So a single crochet for each stitch, leaving you with a total of 24 stitches for the next five rounds. Okay, so your piece should look something like this. You should have a total of eight rounds, with your last round having a total of 24 stitches. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to decrease. So I want to bring my count of stitches down to 16. I'm going to do that just like I did before. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to decrease and then do a single crochet. And then decrease And then do a single crochet. So that gives me four stitches on my next round. And I should end with a total of 16 stitches on this round. Now that I've completed round nine, I should have 16 stitches. 
Now for rounds 10 to 19, or I am going to single crochet in each stitch, leaving me with a total of 16 stitches for each round. Now when you've completed all 19 rounds, your piece should look something like this. Now we're going to gently stuff this leg. And now that you have your leg gently stuffed, I'm going to do just what we did with the arm, except we're only going to make one row. So I'm going to make a row of eight. I'm going to count this chain stitch as my first crochet. I'm going to insert my hook through both stitches that are right next to each other as we close the opening to the leg. So that'll make two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then this one, I don't need a very long tail because I'm just going to weave it into, into my work. Now I'm going to switch over to my size K hook or 6.5 millimeter. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tie in my size 6 bulky yarn. And then I'm going to do six single crochets across this row. I'm going to chain one. I'm going to turn my work. I'm going to count this chain one as a single crochet. And then I'm going to single crochet again across the top five more times, giving me a total of six. Just like that. And I'm going to do this five more times. So chain counts as one single crochet. Two. And again, your piece should look something like this. And then you're going to cut yourself off a pretty good sized tail. Because again, we're going to use this to sew our leg onto the body. And there I have two legs. Now the next thing I want to make before tackling the body is going to be the ears. Again, just like everything else, I'm going to start off with an adjustable ring and eight single crochets. I'm using my chunky size six yarn with my size K hook. Two, three, I want to increase my circle, so I'm going to do two single crochets in each of the eight stitches. In other words, I'm going to increase in each stitch, giving me a total of 16 stitches for round two. Two. Three. 
Okay, completed round two, 16 stitches total. And then we're going to go on to the next step, which is going to be to increase to 24 stitches. So our third round is going to end with 24 stitches. And we're going to begin by doing a single crochet in the next stitch. And then an increase in the stitch after that. Single crochet in the next stitch. And an increase in the stitch after that. Continue that all the way around and you should end up with 24 stitches. So now I've just completed round three and I should have ended up with 24 single crochets in that round. Now for round four, I'm going to do a single crochet in each stitch in the round and that should give me 24 single crochets for round four. Okay, so we've just completed round four and ended that round with 24 stitches. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to decrease to back down to 16 stitches. So as before, just as I've decreased before, I'm going to do a decrease and then a single crochet and then a decrease and then a single crochet. Again, another decrease and then a single crochet. I'm going to continue that all the way around and I should have 16 stitches for this round. So now for round six, we're going to do a single crochet in each of the stitches, ending with a total of 16 single crochets in this round. Okay, so now for our next round, we're going to decrease so that we have eight counts. So again, as before, that'll be one, two, three, and eight. So your ears should be looking something like this so far. And then I'm going to do two more rounds and each of the next rounds I do is going to consist of eight single crochets. So again, my next round is going to be eight single crochets and the round after that is going to be eight more single crochets. And again, I'm going to leave myself a little bit of a tail, which I'll use to sew this onto my rabbit. So you finished with that ear, and this is the other ear that I did. This ear has so much of that fur on this length of yarn that you can't really see the shape of the ear, which is gonna be more of a taper. And then you can also see that this yarn right here, this plushy yarn, it's just a little bit thicker than the other bit of yarn that's on that same strand, like this kind of curly, crunchy yarn right here. And so it's going to not be completely symmetrical, but for Scrappy Rabbit, that's just fine and that's just perfect because that adds to the, the silliness and the, and the oddness in a very cute way of this particular toy. Now the last thing we need to do before assembly is making the body. And the body, as before, we're going to start it off just like every other time we started off a piece. And that's going to be with the adjustable ring and the eight single crochets to make up round one in the adjustable ring. I'm going to be using my large hook, my size K hook, because I'm going to be using my size six bulky yarn for the body.
And then for round two, again, I'm going to increase. So I'm going to do two single crochets in each of these eight stitches to give me a total count of 16. And if I can see through all this fur, we might be cooking with fire. Okay, so now for round three, I want to increase my count to 24 stitches. So I'm going to do my combination of my single crochet. Wow, this stuff is tricky. In my first stitch, and then my two single crochets or my increase in my next stitch. So I'm going to be a single crochet and then two single crochets in the next stitch. What I'm doing is I'm actually feeling for the stitches rather than because I can't see them obviously. There's just too much fur in the way but I can feel where the stitches are at. If you're using a yarn that's kind of a full faux fur you may have to find yourself having to do that otherwise you know you'll see your stitches just fine as before okay I'll see you right back here after we're finished with now that you have 24 stitches and you've completed round three you're going to go ahead and do round four and just do a single crochet in each of the stitches so round four will also consist of 24 stitches now that round four is completed we're going to move on to round five and for round five I want to end with 32 stitches and in order to do that I'm going to need to increase and then single crochet in the next two stitches and then increase and then single crochet in the next two stitches all the way around leaving me with a total count of 32 stitches so basically it will look something like this increase and then single crochet and single crochet and then the next stitch increase And then single crochet and single crochet and you're going to continue repeating that same pattern all the way around now that round five has been completed we're going to do round six and in and in round six we are going to do a single crochet in each of the next 32 stitches giving us a total of 32 six stitches for round six Okay, so now you can really see the bottom part of the body really taking some shape. Now in round seven, we're going to start to decrease to bring it back down to a count of 24. And so how I'm going to do that is I'm going to do a decrease and then I'm going to single crochet two times. So it'll look something like this. A decrease. And then single crochet in the next stitch and single crochet in the next stitch and then decrease and then single crochet in the next stitch and single crochet in the next stitch and continue that pattern all the way around and when we get back to our beginning you should have a total of 24 stitches now, if you need to, please use your stitch marker because that'll really help you from getting lost. All right. So moving on to round eight, we're going to do a single crochet in each of the previously done stitches. So by the time we complete round eight, we should have 24 single crochets in that round. Now for round nine, and if I'm getting my rows and my rounds mixed up, I apologize. Um, I think I may have done that once or twice. I do that. So now that we've completed our round eight and we're moving on to round nine, we're going to start to decrease again because in round nine, I want us to end that round on 16 stitches. And so for that, it's going to be a decrease and then a single crochet and a decrease and a single crochet all the way around. So a decrease 
and then a single crochet. And then a decrease, and then a single crochet. I'm going to continue that all the way around, and we should end up with 16 stitches for round nine. So now that we've completed round nine, and we have 16 single crochets on that round, we're going to go ahead and we're going to decrease again. And we're going to bring that down to a count of eight. And so the whole thing's just going to be decrease. So that'll be decrease one, decrease two, decrease three, so on and so forth. We have something that looks like this so far. And I'm going to decrease again because I want my opening to have a total of four stitches. So I'm going to continue decreasing for round 11. And when I'm finished with that round, I should have a total of four stitches. And now that I have an opening about four stitches wide, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stuff the bottom part of my body. And this I want it to be stuffed pretty good. I want it to be pretty, not bulging, but I want it to be really firm. And then when I have it stuffed mostly to the stuffedness that I'd like to have it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to single crochet four more stitches all the way around, making that my round 12. So now you should have something that looks like this, a nice ball. And now I'm going to start to increase again. So now we're going to start actually forming the head. So the actual head and the body are pretty much one piece. And I'm going to do that starting in round 13, where I'm going to begin my increase. So for round 13, I'm going to start my increase again, to start shaping the head. And here we're going to increase each stitch. So by the time I finish round 13, I will have eight stitches. So I'll begin with my increase. So now for round 14, I'm going to increase again. So I'm going to end up with a total of 16 single crochets. So I'm going to continue on. So now your piece should start looking kind of like a, like a vase. You should start funneling out again for your head. So we've completed round 14, which gave us 16 stitches. And now we're going to move on to round 15. And for round 15, we're going to increase again to 24 stitches. So as before, that will be done by making a single crochet and then an increase. A single crochet. And then now that we've completed or 24 stitches for round 15. We're going to move on to round 16. And for round 16, we're going to single crochet, a single crochet in each of the 24 stitches, giving us a total of 24 stitches. After completing round 16, we're going to do this one more time for round 17. So we're going to single crochet in each stitch and end with 24 stitches for round 17. Now for round 18, Oh, let's see. I know the focus isn't so great when these pieces start getting pretty big. It's kind of hard for me to keep it all in focus. I get going and don't pay attention or, you know, a hundred different things happen, but sometimes my focus goes out. And well, it's just something I don't really have a lot of control over right now until I get a really fancy smancy camera. So until then, I guess we just have to deal with this. At any rate, so our next round is going to be round 18. And for round 18, we're going to start to decrease again so that we can end with a total of 16 stitches. And as before, we're basically going to repeat the series of decrease and then single crochet. Decrease. And then single crochet. And we'll continue that all the way around and we should end up with 16 stitches. So now for round 19, we're going to decrease again. We're going to bring this down to a count of eight stitches in our next round. 
and that's going to be just a decrease all the way around. So that'll be one, two. So I now have eight stitches that I've got in my opening and I'm going to start stuffing a little bit. So we're going to start filling this up. So now I have it mostly filled. Not quite to where I want to end up with it, but this is good enough for the moment. Because now I'm going to start thinking in terms of where I want to put my eyes and kind of get a general idea for the face. Because while I still have a small opening, I want to be able to fit my nose in and then get my eyes. And I think I'm going to do it right about here. This is kind of where I'm interested in having the face show. And so I'm going to start by figuring out about where I want my nose. And I think I want the nose to be right around here. Sort of in the middle, kind of sort of in the middle of the face, maybe a little lower than the middle of the face. Because I still need room for my eyes. So I'm going to kind of eyeball where I want my, have my eyes at. And that looks pretty good right about there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and while I've got my face or my head open, I'm going to go ahead and attach my nose. And now if you're using safety eyes, this is a good time for you to go ahead and put your eyes in. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill my head up with just a little more stuffing and um, then get ready to start closing that up. And now that I'm ready to close up my head, I'm going to go ahead and decrease again. To where I'm down to four stitches in the top of my head. Okay, so now that I have my last four stitches in the top and pretty much closed up my my head, now's a good time to weave in the last bit of this yarn and start the assembly process. So now the next thing I want to do is put my eyes on. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take my glue. In this case, I'm using some Gorilla Glue. It's a clear, kind of all-purpose sort of craft glue. I'm going to put a generous amount of that on there. You, I'm sure, have a glue you prefer to work with. And so use whatever is appropriate for the yarn you're doing or the type of eyes or material that you're attempting to glue to the front of this toy. So now that I got that, I'm going to try to kind of figure out where I want them to sit. I'm going to put them on like that. I'm going to let them sit and dry. Let them set up. Because this is great glue. But if you pull or if the eyes have to come off once. Even early in the gluing process. Before you even think it's dried. It won't hold very well after that. But if you just put it on right the first time around. And let it dry in that position. You're good as gold. Okay, so I'll meet you back here when this is all dried to show you what to do next. I've jumped a little ahead and I've gotten half of this scrappy rabbit assembled. Just so that you can see what this side looks like. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the other side. So the first thing we're going to do is approach the other eye. Now how I did these eyes and the eyes on the other scrappy rabbits is basically I loosely chained five stitches. Now you may, depending on your eye, 
and what you choose to do for your eye. You may do less chains or you may do more chains. It's all up to you, but it's all basically going to be added the same way. So I've got my tails and I'm going to figure out kind of which side I want it to lay. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just thread my needle. And then I'm going to put my needle in. Like, like here's probably good. And then I'm going to bring it back up again and weave it right back into that bit of eyebrow. And then I've got enough yarn that I can do that again. And this time I'm going to weave that back in just to anchor it down. Now, this is not something you want to sew very tightly. You just want to do it loose so that it tacks it in nicely and firmly, but not so tight that you distort the, the shape of your, of your eyebrow. And maybe I can talk and do this at the same time. We'll see. So then I'm just going to do that again and run that yarn through. And then tuck that back in. There we go. And that's how we hide that end. And then I'm also going to do the same thing with this end as well. I'm going to thread my yarn. And I'm going to bring it back up and tack down the rest of this eyebrow. And then just simply weave in the last of the yarn to hide it within the head of this rabbit. So here you go. Now if you feel like you need a little more yarn to maybe tack your brow your eyebrows down a little bit absolutely if you feel you need a little bit more glue just to tack a little spot down go for it okay so now we have the eyes finished and we've got the brows and next i'm going to do the other cheek now as you remember this is the circle in which we're going to make the cheek. And the cheek you're going to kind of form a little bit. Basically, you're going to just go in and it's really kind of a, a, a bit of a running stitch. Right? As you, as you move this around and you sort of shape it as you go around into kind of a, into a, into a cheek formation. And don't be afraid to pinch things up a little bit here and to, you know, kind of shape them, you know, over there. This is the beauty of a, of a soft, of a soft toy. It can be, it can be manipulated a little bit. Okay, so now that I've gotten to, to about here, what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to stuff it a little bit before closing up that cheek. Okay, and now I'm going to close that up. And as soon as I do that, I'm going to come back and show you what to do next. So now you can really see that face taking shape. Next thing I'm going to do is to add the other ear. And we're going to put it right there on the head. And I'm going to use this to sort of do a whip stitch around these stitches onto the head. And I'm going to keep the opening fairly tight and what that does is that actually with this with this heavier yarn that gives it enough stability for the ears to stand up on their own so i'm going to go ahead and do that and then show you what that looks like when i'm finished okay so now we got both ears up now you can see this ear is just a tad bit bigger than this ear 
not because there are any more stitches, but because this part of that yarn, that multi type of yarn that was all mixed together that we used for this rabbit, happens to be a little thicker than the yarn on this side. So now the next thing I'm going to do is actually sew on the tail. Now what I did with the tail, I've already gotten it started. And what I basically did was did a running stitch around the perimeter of that tail piece. And then I just pulled on and cinched that, that yarn a little bit to give me a kind of cotton tail look. And now I'm going to stuff it a bit. I'm going to turn my rabbit over and I'm going to decide about where the middle of his butt sits. And then again, I'm just going to go ahead and sew that in place. Sew it around the perimeter. So usually a, a kind of a whip stitch is usually enough. Okay, so now you can see the tail. Now, the only real thing I want to caution you with is to make sure that your tail sits right towards the bottom of the ball of the body. Because this tail is what is going to help stabilize your bunny so it can sit comfortably without tipping over. So now the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to sew on the arm. As you can see, the whole project, it's super simple. Again, this, this novelty crushed velvet fake fur yarn is very forgiving in so many ways. So not only is it bulky and allows you to move through your project quite quickly, it also hides a lot of sins. So if you're brand new to this and your stitches aren't perfect or you're not entirely sure how to best sew a piece onto your, your rabbit, Chances are it's still going to look fantastic no matter what you do or how you do it because it's going to really take a lot to mess it up. So basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my yarn and my arm and I'm going to sit here and right across from the other arm on the other side of the body, I'm going to place my arm right here on the side and then I have my yarn and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew this top part of my arm on to the body so that the arm just rests to the side. That's just the next thing you need to do and I'll see you back here in just a few seconds. Okay so now you can see we got the other arm sewn on and now we're going to sew on the very last part and that's going to be the other leg and you can see how I have this leg sewn starting from the center of the bottom of the ball and just straight across, kind of perpendicular. So we're going to do the same thing. It's going to be basically a whip stitch that we're going to do with the leg. And we're going to just line it up and just bring it right across in the same line as the other leg. And so now looking at it from behind, you can see where we just basically whip stitched and how those stitches just disappeared into this fabric. And just by virtue of the type of fabric that it actually is. Again, this is a fantastic beginner's piece. It gives you something that you can do that's cute, that you really enjoy, and that you actually feel like you can be really successful at. For the more advanced crocheter, this is a fantastic piece because there again, it's just so darn cute. It's just going to it's going to make you happy. It's going to make whoever happy that you make it for. And it moves really quick and you can use your scraps. All those great, thick, bulky novelty yarns that you buy because you think you're going to do something with them. And they're so unique and they're so soft. But when it comes right down to it, you're kind of at a loss. So now it's the time for me to say goodbye. So until... I see all you wonderful and creative fiber artists. Again, stay crafty, stay amazing, and above all, 
keep weaving your weird. Bye-bye now.